Good morning, uh, Secretary General. And um, first of all, before we get into the e-learning, what do you make of uh, the crisis that the coronavirus pandemic has caused the education sector? Yeah, the coronavirus uh, COVID-19 is a global pandemic that has brought uh, all activities globally to a standstill, not only in the education sector, even in the economic field. With lockdown, everybody can appreciate that the virus has literally stopped all human and collective activities across all nations. Mm -hmm. And uh, education has been greatly affected and it shall remain uh, even affected beyond the COVID-19 mm -hmm. crisis. Mm -hmm. And it is a sector that we must prepare all aspects in terms of human resource and, uh, and finances to ensure that we continue delivering quality uh, education during this and beyond the crisis. And what is that threshold? How much more of disruption can we take uh, before, I mean, for, for, for us now to be convinced that there is need to postpone from, the national examination? From the global view, and uh, Kenya is not an isolated nation. The global community, uh, is we are part of it. And the International Committee on Sustainable Development Goal uh, in charge of teachers at UNESCO has made it very clear that governments must engage uh, teachers within the country, in the, in, within their countries, in developing the COVID response action. Mm -hmm. And as a union, we are developing our different proposals which we shall be able to serve on the ministry because we must prepare for the post-corona period. We shall not be living in the corona uh, pandemic uh, mm -hmm. For, for all the time. This is a virus that needs to be broken through lockdown and through effective measures within a period not exceeding a month. And we have seen many nations talking of reopening the economy. We must also think as a country that we must reopen our economy at some point. And we must also prepare for reopening of schools. And we are thinking of the various measures, uh, including uh, 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 particularly the sustenance of social distances. Mm -hmm. If we resume schools, how shall we effectively implement the short social distances? What is the immediate measure that we can do in place? Probably recalling class eight and from four candidates and uh, social distance ahead of the rest. Uh, because Kenya, we must be realistic. And this is where we disagree with the government. If we talk of uh, emphasizing on e-learning, we will be disadvantaging over 90% of the learners who cannot access IT infrastructure and marginalized communities who are already too marginalized in terms of IT infrastructure. IT infrastructure will not be a solution or e-learning will not be the solution for the entire continent of Africa and the third world because of obvious regions of uh, lack of access of infrastructure. The real learning that will take place in the third world countries, Kenya included, is total resumption and, uh, of learning in schools mm -hmm. and physical reporting back of students uh, so that we can continue with learning. And therefore, we must think ahead mm -hmm. in case the, virus, the, the pandemic persists. What can the entire government uh, uh, put in place to ensure that uh, uh, learning goes on in school in terms of testing, mass testing in the country? Are we able to test all the students, test all the teachers, ensure? In fact, one of the targets of the International Committee on Sustainable Development Goal, Agenda 2030 teachers, is that governments must ensure that students and teachers are safe. And uh, in case of resumption of learning, what safety measures must the government put in place that we're able to do uh, testing in schools, we're able to uh, implement uh, uh, social distancing, we're able to ensure that students are safe and everyone in every learning institution is safe and learning on goes on normally. We but, must think creatively uh -huh. beyond where we are and uh, we must be realistic okay. that we can... Uh, uh, we, we, we cannot use e-learning. Virtual learning will not work for majority and thousands of 
children in this country. Uh, do you think it's pretty necessary to go ahead and I, test I all the what teachers? The minister, what, the, what the Ministry of Health is doing mm -hmm. is uh, to expand the testing. Mm -hmm. the, to expand the testing of citizens. And I think where it's been targeted now at the hotspots, as the government uh, uh, rolls out uh, the mass testing of citizens, countries uh, uh, that have succeeded have rolled out mass testing like China. Mm -hmm. It is compulsory for everybody to go for testing. And Are we able to do that, SG? And the most effective, and, and that, is, that, that is where you look at government, the COVID-19 uh, resource mobilization and the mobilization of Camry and all other institutions to be able to develop measures of doing testing anywhere, anytime, at any minute. Mm -hmm. There is no disease that you cannot develop uh, response measures. Even oh. disease that have emerged, uh, testing measures and infrastructure have been put in place. And as a union, we've called for roll out the test beyond the target so that even testing can be done across all the 47 counties. And if it is possible to do mass testing across the country, it will even be possible to test communities, test students, through learning institutions. Uh, and once you uh, do uh, that, you'll uh, be uh, able SG to isolate... Secretary yes, General... And that um, is where the country... That is where the country will move to. And countries that have succeeded, right. for Kenya to succeed, it must roll out effective and invest in mass testing across the country and uh, recruit health personnel. And this is where we support the government okay. very strongly. The measures that have been, been put in place are good, but a lot needs to be done. And... Uh, particularly rolling out mass testing across the country. And we have seen when the disease started, they could test uh, maybe 100 in a day, and then after a while it's about 500, and now they're able to test over 1,000, which to get to a stage okay. where we can test thousands and masses of citizens so that we can scientifically identify. You know, this is a disease. We must use empirical science to deal with it. And one aspect that the country will love to invest in, and many countries will love to invest in, is effective mass testing okay. to identify uh, citizens who are suffering from COVID-19. All, all, all right, SG, of course, um, that may be termed as ambitious, bearing in mind that in the, even in the U.S. that has the highest of, highest of cases, it has more than 3.9 million confirmed, I mean, uh, 3.9 million tests so far conducted against a population of 328 million. Of course, the Kenyan authorities are saying that there is the deficiency of testing kits across the world. But um, let's focus on the e-learning that you're talking about. We hear the cabinet secretary is saying that uh, there are different avenues, TV, radio, as well as the uh, smartphones and um, the platforms that may be available online how difficult is it for learners and even the teachers but, at public let, let, let's get to the the typical no sg 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 let me ask radios. the question just just before you respond yeah. let me ask the question how practical is it for uh, teachers and learners in public institutions to especially get content from these uh, platforms no it, it is difficult and uh, we've, we've done the assessment of e-learning with respect even to artificial intelligence across the world, and it cannot work in third world countries. And uh, let us look at the ordinary households in Kenya, uh, the, both the middle class and the low class. Where do they have the radios? Even if they do, how can we ensure connectivity of the 320,000 teachers with their learners in class across their homes? How can we ensure uh, clear, uh, effective learning control and interaction across the network. And uh, we look at the laptop project, it failed in this country. That means we cannot even talk of uh, moving close to using this infrastructure and we should not even uh, think about it. Mm -hmm. Whatever has been aired through the various media channels is... Uh, it's not effective at all. How many you do a research, how many students are being targeted, and how many students and teachers have been reached? Not more than 10%. What is happening with the rest of the 90%? We must ensure that we sustain equity in this process. And mm -hmm. I think the only route, and we are convinced, the only route for now, even as we try to embrace uh, e-learning as, as, as an item of the future, so that probably in future, uh, government should be able to provide IT infrastructure to homes, 
to families that are vulnerable so that there is equity. Because when you talk of television, how many Kenyans on television, in, in average, in every county, mm -hmm. how many households have got television? And if they have, uh, do, they, do the parents uh, who are fighting with poverty, looking for food and scared of COVID-19, do they have the pedagogical skills to control mm -hmm. even their own children through sustained learning? This is mere wishful thinking and is a mere public relation uh, avenue. It will not work for this country. The best we can do is to continue supporting government with the effort that have put in place and the government should not fear biting the bullet and even instituting tougher measures including lockdown in more areas of this country that are identified to be hotspots so that we can take a shorter time to break the virus and flatten the curve. The curve will definitely be flattened scientifically through efforts mm -hmm. that are being put in place and the government should direct resources to the specific areas of combating and flattening the virus, then other resources can be channeled for the post-COVID era, including more financing in education, and we rethink further about how to integrate infrastructure, IT infrastructure, okay. effectively train teachers and prepare learners. E-learning and IT virtual learning can only work after we prepare properly uh, during the post-COVID uh, 2019 uh, period. But okay. I think for now, the only option, the only road, the only avenue is to control the virus. Okay. Once the virus is controlled, uh -huh. then we can resume normalcy. If we resume normalcy, then we will be able to plan effectively for uh, how, to, uh, re how to resume proper learning in schools, whether we recall uh, examination classes first, in, engage in and containing uh, uh, safety measures in All our right. learning institution, in our homes. This is a disease and uh, no one has a specific, so it needs collective effort for all of us to come together. And uh, the Sustainable Development Agenda Committee at UNESCO has advised government to work with teachers in developing the post-COVID response. And we are prepared, basically because of the skills okay. and experience and expertise that teachers have. And this is where Professor Magoa uh, has to come in. He must listen to us. He must consider uh, our suggestion. Then we are happy to okay. come out very strongly to one Kenyan that it is too early to talk even about postponing of national exams uh, without knowing whether we can manage maybe kenya can be one of the few countries <clears throat> that will that will break and flatten the virus within a short time once we do that we'll have no business uh shutting down our life okay we must, we'll get back to uh, uh, SG, let's listen walking. to let's we listen to professor magoha see uh, sg let's listen to professor magoha exactly on what you're talking about uh, the situation with the examinations um postponement j just before you compare the situation with the private schools versus the public schools in a moment Nobody has thought of postponing the examinations, the national examinations, both the uh, primary school exams and the secondary school exams. And to the best of the government's ability, the children are getting online learning, as I stated last week. I am aware that the parents are very, very apprehensive, but they should be fair to themselves because government has not pronounced itself that the exam will be postponed. And after His Excellency the President concurs with what the Minister of Education has methodically gone through, I hope that during the course of uh, next week, we shall tell you the various scenarios that we have come up with. And they, not all of them involved a doomsday situation. And since we are very optimistic, I still refuse to be guided by the fear mongers. All right. So SG, you hear the cabinet secretary saying there that uh, there are various options that they are looking at, but they will have to wait until they brief the president. Um, as you reflect on that, so some private schools, and actually most of them have been offering lessons via Zoom or different platforms. And obviously you would understand this, that the learners need to continue learning, but also the teachers in the private schools need to continue earning. 
what, how does this, does this compare with the public sector and what should happen? Because at the end of the day, you don't want Alana repeating the same that content what, that they have been exposed that to. Why, that is why we are saying unless we put a measure that ensures equity, mm -hmm. COVID-19 is bringing a lot of inequities in the, in the education sector. If we talk of the private schools, uh, the private schools and, uh, and, and the clients in the private schools who are parents can afford infrastructure, IT infrastructure. And uh, they've been conducting normal learning through Zoom and uh, other infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The public school hosts the poorest of the poorest parents in this country. And you cannot talk of uh, uh, virtual learning, cannot talk of Zoom. So nothing has been going on. So there have been two sets of activities here. In the private school, there's been learning. In the public school, there has been no learning. So definitely, this is a, a reality of inequality which must be, uh, which must be addressed as we look at the uh, COVID response measures that mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the, the cabinet secretary is saying they've developed the different scenarios they will share with the president and uh, we can assure the nation that we'll also submit our considered uh, proposals okay. uh, to the cabinet secretary because he is not bothered to, uh, to console the stakeholders. And uh, the, the UNESCO has made it very clear, whatever measures that are being put in place must be shared with the stakeholders and particularly consultation with teachers. And, uh, and uh, we, we, we are very clear about it. We'll also do, uh, we have uh, prepared our own uh, our, our own paper and we'll be submitting it to the cabinet secretary in terms of what we think should be done to compare because we must defend public education All nobody right. speaks for public schools mm -hmm. and when government talks of no we are in, in, in implementing and we are working on it virtual learning and all the rest that is targeting private schools the government does not exist to promote only the interest of private schools the public education is key, it must be protected. And by the end of this, we must ensure that we mitigate against inequalities of uh, public school system and, uh, and, and the private schools and the, and the IT the technologies. So whatever proposals that shall be pronounced by government, it must uh, contain the various diverse input of the other players in the sector. And this is where we urge the minister, can you engage also in wide consultation mm -hmm. with the stakeholders uh, beyond, beyond the government itself? Mm -hmm. Because any input without the input of teachers is not complete uh, within the framework of international standards. And this is the corridor that we shall be able to put our heads together with government and develop measures that are workable. Because at the end of the day, uh, once measures are pronounced, it will be teachers to implement. And right. we want and, and SG, to implement what we are able to implement. SG, um, if you could face the camera. Um, so the cabinet secretary says that uh, he's, he has been consulting and will continue to consult. I'm just wondering, as you wind up, has there been any pronouncement or any activity at the Education co Committee of the National Assembly that you sit in? Sit at? Yeah, yeah, the National Assembly is, uh, is a legislative arm of government that plays oversight, representation, and... Uh, and, and, and other roles. And, and uh, the Committee of Education, I am prohibited by the standing orders to speak on behalf of the committee, but I can assure the public that the National Assembly and the committee is concerned with what is happening with COVID-19 uh, and is one of the items mm -hmm. that is, uh, that is uh, being considered. And even as business goes on in Parliament with respect to COVID-19, uh, most of it will touch on education and it's about budget. And if you look at the proposals that have come to the National Assembly, it's more funding to, to, to the sector. And uh, what the National Assembly shall be doing with respect to the cost implication of ensuring quality and putting in place stronger measures now and beyond the COVID-19 mm -hmm. in the education sector. And this is where the minister must know. He will need more resources. There will be a lot of money required to mitigate against, to, to ensure delivery of quality beyond COVID-19. And right. this is where the National Assembly shall stand very strong to support education. And the Committee of Education, a very reasonable committee, 
shall, I am sure, shall be able to do a lot to support the delivery of equitable quality education during this crisis and beyond the crisis. Okay. And as a country, we must be optimistic and listen to every view, however bitter it is, and uh, get an equilibrium and agree on what is best. That is how successful nations work. This is a time we must open our hearts, we must open our minds, mm -hmm. and we must accept, just like in many nations, government, governance of any nation is done with the support of scientists, and scientists are recognized as part of governance All of right. any country. And we should now shift from political brinkmanship and allow science to take place and we work empirically and we thank everybody in the country, the media. There have been a lot of tremendous efforts in this country, but we need to work more collectively together in terms of the measures that mm -hmm. the government has put in place. And we ask the government, don't shy away from putting in place okay. stiffer measures. Because we have seen the public, mm -hmm. the public, the Kenyan public is very difficult to control in terms of enforcing the government measures. Look at the lockdown of Nairobi. How many Kenyans move into Nairobi and out of Nairobi and passing the roadblock and spread, likely spreading? There are many of them. And the police are finding it very hard mm -hmm. to enforce simple measures that need to be applied. On behalf okay. of teachers of this country, I appeal to the citizens of Kenya to mm. fully comply with the, with the procedures, regulations that has put in place so that out of this problem earlier we don't get into uh, right. a, a, a spike of, of the virus that will kill all of us or many of us we don't Thank get you. into a situation of no yes, food, SG. and we don't get into a situation of no education and no life and we ask if citizens are not cooperating then don't negotiate and don't compromise all right we hear, we hear you loud and clear secretary and general Th 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 thank and you, Secretary General. Way, of course, we'll uh, be able to get back to life. Thank you. Very, very loud and clear, we hear you from the Kenya National Union of Teachers. And thank you so much for joining us uh, from Bomet to reflect on uh, the disruption that has rocked uh, the education uh, sector. Of course, uh, Wilson Sosion is the Secretary General of NAT as well as a nominated uh, Member of Parliament. Thank you for your time.